Hi, thank you for listening to my talk today. Uh, my name is Janice Mitchell, and I'm the author of this new book called My Ticket to Ride, How I Ran Away to England to Meet the Beatles and Got Rock and Roll Band in Cleveland. If you can believe this is a true story, my true story from 1964, that I would love to share with you. I'd love for you to understand a little bit about what Beatlemania was like in uh, 1964. I think I was the first Beatle maniac in the city of Cleveland, maybe Cuyahoga County, maybe even Ohio. The first time I heard I Want to Hold Your Hand was during my Christmas break in 1963 when I was 15 years old. Up until that point, music was pretty good. We could dance to it. Number one on the uh, hit parade was a song by a nun. It was, she was called The Singing Nun and the tune was Dominique, and she sang it in French and accompanied herself on an acoustic guitar. Then, all of a sudden, a new disc jockey was coming to Cleveland named Jerry G. And in 1964, you may not be aware of this, but there was no technology whatsoever. No internet, no cell phones. All we had was the radio, and that's how we learned about new, new tunes. So when I first heard, I want to hold your hand for the very first time in Cleveland, it just electrified me. It transformed me actually immediately as it transformed and energized the whole world. It was the Beatles music. They were here. And now our lives would all become quite different. And I fell in love with them. There were four of them, uh, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. And the only way we could actually see them was if we went and bought Beatles albums, which started coming out. Uh, Meet the Beatles was the very first one. Or you could buy teen magazines or Beatles magazines and read about them and see their pictures and learn who they were and what kind of girls they liked and their favorite color and what they did uh, when they were on their free time. So the Beatles transformed me to such a remarkable degree that my best friend and I, we decided that we needed to leave our unhappy homes and run away to England to live in Beatle land, where the Beatles were born, where their music was made. We wanted to be there. So during the summer, we planned, we got our passports, we did everything legally, bought two one-way tickets, TWA, from Cleveland to London. So I'll read you a little bit from my book to tell you how, how it affected me. Chapter 1. It was Christmas break, 1963, and I sat in the kitchen trying to stay awake while writing a homework essay. Homework during break just wasn't fair, but it had to be done. I turned on the large, portable, orange and white radio that was my lifeline to the outer world, pointed the telescoping chrome antenna toward the window, and turned the dial to 1420, WHK. So that's how it all began. So my friend and I, the day after the Beatles concert in Cleveland at Public Auditorium, we flew to England, uh, got on a plane, we didn't even tell anybody, and we arrived in London. And that's when our real adventure began. Now here we are, two 16-year-olds on our own in London for the very first time, and there was no way to actually find where we were. If it happened today, we wouldn't be able to get out of the airport. But then it was a time of innocence, an actual, a time of freedom. We arrived and we stayed in a hotel and then we got a little studio apartment in a section of London called Notting Hill, which you might have heard about. Uh, we stayed in, a, in an area called Holland Park. And we learned how to use the tube, which was just like the rapid transit and the subway system, to go to Soho. That was our destination because I had read in one of our Beatles magazines that that's where the Beatles could hang out. So Soho was where we wanted to be. So we started going to clubs and we went to, the first club we went to was the Marquee Club. And there we met two boys that became our good friends. Uh, they were both from Liverpool, they were musicians, they were the coolest guys you could ever want to see. So we began our adventure of going to all the different clubs, seeing live music, which there was tons and tons of live music every night. This is where the British Invasion was born. 
And even during that one of our club visits to the Crawdaddy Club, we learned that the Rolling Stones had been the house band just two weeks before that. And now the Kinks, and I'm sure you've heard of the Kinks, they were now the house band. So these were the kinds of adventures we were having. And we, we all hitchhiked to Liverpool, you know, the, the place where the Beatles were born and where the Cavern Club was. And we had no idea that anybody was looking for us whatsoever because we weren't listening to the radio, we weren't watching the telly, as they say in England, or reading newspapers. We didn't know that an international investigation had been going on to find us. So after 23 days, that's when I learned that we were actually being sought after. And I just want to mention this cover on my book, which shows this picture of me. That's me at age 16. You can probably see it better here. I'm in the, uh, I am in a United States Embassy limousine being driven to Heathrow Airport on my way back to Cleveland. And we had had a press conference already because it, we became inter international news because of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. So this was the paparazzi on the back of a motor scooter following us to the airport and he managed to get upside uh, right next to the limo and he's calling out my name Janice Janice and I just turned gave that smile and that wave and that the picture became big news so there's a lot of uh, international coverage which you can see in the book all the um, headlines I have a bunch of them here so you can see this is the evidence of our adventure two pages of headlines and inside the book, there are some of the stories uh, that are in here. Let me find one to read, if I can. Oh, yes. Believe Missing Girls Adrift in Beetleland. London, two young girls missing from Cleveland, Ohio, and believed to be in Britain, have not so far contacted the English girl to whom one of them wrote. I wrote two letters. I wrote to Brian Epstein, the Beatles' manager, asking, telling him we would like to get jobs because we were moving to England. So the whole adventure includes what happened while we were there and also how I met the Rolling Stones the summer before we left about the Beatles concert where we sat front row center uh, in Cleveland and also what happened when we came back to Cleveland. Whoa, a lot of things not really that great. So as you can see here, Beatles join Hunt for Runaways. That's one of the articles. So I hope that you will pick up the book and come along with me. This is my story, and I wrote it exactly step by step. Uh, in back in the 64, we used to see a lot of teen magazines where it would say, Beatles reveal 100 secrets. Well, I finally reveal all my secrets after keeping it to myself for more than 50 years. So I hope that you will uh, pick up a copy. Come along with me if you feel brave enough to do so and relive what it was like back then for true Beatle maniacs, Beatle fans, or if you know someone who loves the Beatles, you can't miss this book. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it on um, mybeatlesbook.com, Barnes & Noble. Um, so join me. Would love to hear you. Thank you so much. My ticket to ride.